And now on to our dinosaur of the day, Gastonia, which was a request from Paleo Mike 716 so thanks. Good choice, Paleo Mike. Yes. Oh, because it's an ankylosaur? Yes. Yeah. So it's an ankylosaur that lived in the early Cretaceous in what is now Utah in the United States in the Cedar Mountain Formation. It looked like other ankylosaurs, you know, walked on four legs, was heavily armored, had a beak. It's estimated to be around 16 feet or 5 meters long and weigh 1.9 tons. Seems about average for an ankylosaur, I would say. Yeah. Not big, not small. But still dense and armored. Yes. It had this flat, broad body, and its body was covered in round, bony scutes. Also known as osteoderms. Mm-hmm. And it had a large pelvic shield with bony plates fused together and large triangular spikes on the top and sides of its body. It also had an expanded shin bone and a long tail, but with no tail club. So it's a notosaurid, probably. Yes. Ankylosauria notosauridae. Polycanthinae after that, if we want to get specific. Gotcha. So you could call it and still be right, an ankylosaur as well as a notosaurid, but not an ankylosaurid. Yes. Just a regular ankylosaur. Because it doesn't have the tail club. The tail did, though, have triangular blades on the sides that could have sheared and left gashes. So that might have been part of its defense. Gastonia also had a relatively long neck and it had at least two bone rings covering the neck, and it had an elongated, somewhat pointed skull. There was no armor on the snout. On its cheeks, it had small horns, the jugal horns, and it had small horns on the back of the skull, the squamosal. It also had a notch in the upper beak, and the beak was toothless. It's possible that Gastonia may have headbutted, Its brain case was somewhat flexible, which would help with absorbing shock. And it also had a pretty thick skull. So this is some speculation here. Interesting. Or it could also just be that that was how the armor worked, by having thick skull. True. And absorbing the shock with the somewhat flexible brain case. It also had forward-facing eyes. Gastonia was herbivorous, you may have guessed. Hundreds of Gastonia bones have been found together. Oh, cool. Yeah, the discovery helped show that ankylosaurs may not have been so solitary. They may have lived in herds. There's two species, Gastonia bergii and Gastonia lori mcwinniae. <laughs> that, is, that is a species name right there. Yeah, we actually mentioned the Gastonia lori mcwinniae in our one of our books because that was named in 2016 by Kinnear and others. And Gastonia bergii was named in 1998 by Jim Kirkland. The genus name Gastonia is in honor of Robert Gaston, the paleontologist and also the founder of Gaston Design Inc., which makes fossil replicas, including the one we have of a stegosaurus plate. Oh, that's right. That's a Gaston design? I believe so. Nice. So Gaston found the fossils when he worked for a rock shop owner in Moab, Utah. The species name Bergii is in honor of the former director of the College of Eastern Utah Prehistoric Museum, Donald Bergi. That second species, Lori McWinnie, is named for Lori McWinnie, who found the Gastonia bone bed in 1999. And the holotype for that one is a skull roof. It's not often that they name a species with a full first and multi-syllabic last name yeah. in one Laurie McWinnie. <laughs> it's like, could have just gone with McWinnie or Laurie, but no. Uh, I like it. Why not both? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Gastonia is also the name of a city in North Carolina in the United States, but that doesn't really have to do much with this dinosaur. The holotype of Gastonia bergii is the skull of an adult. The type specimen... CEUM-1307, was found in a bone bed in Grand County, Utah, in the Yellow Cat member of Cedar Mountain Formation. And this bone bed includes fossils of a few Gastonia, an Iguanodontid, and Utah raptor. The most common fossils in Cedar Mountain Formation were Gastonia. And they may have been so common because they were so well protected against Utah raptor. Yeah, that certainly helps. Yeah, all that armor. So there's a lot of Gastonia fossils, but also a lot of disarticulated material. 
The 1998 paper mentioned four partial skulls, a complete uncrushed skull, and lots of vertebrae and armor. And so a lot of the fossils were scattered. So it was five individuals that they'd found at a minimum. Gotcha. So there must have been like five left humerus or some bone that overlaps. Oh, they're going by the skulls. Oh, there were five skulls. Yeah. Four wow. partial skulls and a complete uncrushed skull. Oh, that's great. Mm-hmm. And I guess you did mention that the holotype is a skull, which is also really important because if you don't have the skull of an ankylosaur, it's likely to get nomen dubium on you. <laughs> so I guess we don't have to worry about that with Gastonia. Yep. So Gastonia had characters of ankylosaurids and notosaurids. It had an ankylosaurid-like skull. It had a triangular skull. The discovery of a second species of of Gastonia adds to the support of defining Polycanthidae as a family of ankylosaurs separate from Ankylosauridae and Notosauridae, which had been suggested by a few people, Carpenter in 2001, Kirkland and others in 2010, Lowen and Kirkland in 2013, and Lowen and others in 2014. Yeah, I keep expecting our classification of ankylosaurs to switch because we covered another paper, too, where they were talking about how we shouldn't use the categorization notosaurid anymore because that's actually two different, like, less related groups. And I think Polycanthidae was one. But still, in all the new papers, I always see the term notosaurid used and ankylosaurid used. So I don't think it's really caught on yet. But yeah. I am expecting at some point for it to switch. You're just talking about notosaurids. Yeah. And while actually, while I was talking about that, I was like, should I use one of the other terms? But in the paper, they're literally calling it notosaurids the whole time. And that paper just came out. So yeah, people, even though there are some people talking about we should stop using the term notosaurid and use these other family names, it hasn't really changed yet. In the literature, everyone's still saying notosaurid from what I see. Yeah. So Part of the reason Polycanthidae is not universally accepted is because there's some analyses that are restricted to skulls, and I guess some of the characters aren't necessarily in the skull. Hmm. So Polycanthidae, though, it's for specimens that have certain shared notosaurid and ankylosaurid-like characters. Gotcha. In 2016, Billy Kinnear, Kenneth Carpenter, and Alan Shaw re-described Gastonia and named that second species Gastonia Laurie McWinnier. So two birds, one paper. <laughs> <laughs> and Gastonia Lori McWinnier had a flat skull roof compared to Gastonia bergii's more domed head. So that's why there's two species. Gastonia has been found in Yellow Cat Quarry in the Gaston Quarry, north of Arches National Park in Utah, as well as Dalton Well Quarry, north of Moab, Utah, Lori's site near Yellow Cat Quarry, known from two skulls and two partial skulls, and the skull is one of the best early ankylosaur skulls known. They named the second species based on the individuals found in a bone bed known as Laurie's site. Makes sense, Laurie McWinnier. And that's a predominantly monospecific bone bed of Gastonia. So it's possible that the individuals died together from a drought or they drowned while crossing a swollen river. A swollen river? You don't hear that as a description for rivers very often. True. So I guess like a flooded river or like... Something that was hard to cross. During a storm. They said that most cedar mountain ankylosaurs are known from partial, usually single individuals, except for Gastonia. All three of these localities were bone beds. Wow. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. So the holotype locality, type locality, is yellow cat quarry. They had a lot of bones that were mostly disarticulated and scattered. Some bones were badly crushed and distorted. It was hard for them to reconstruct the armor. In the Dalton Well Quarry, at least nine individuals were found based on brain cases and skulls. Eight of them are subadults and one is an adult. So these fossils may show gregarious behavior. That's interesting that there were eight subadults and an adult because sometimes people speculate about maybe the subadults had their own little group where they would sort of live together and then the adults might have a separate group or as once they're adults, they might split up. But that there was one adult mixed in with smaller individuals. Yeah. What was that adult doing? <laughs> yeah. Maybe it was caring for all those subadults maybe. or maybe there were lots of other adults and they just didn't happen to fossilize. Mm hmm. So 2009 study found the fossils to be at least partially articulated at the time of debris flow reworking. 
And they're saying this alternative idea that the group was killed and transported before being buried was unlikely because the soft tissue should have resulted in articulated skeletons. Yeah, so in other words, it looks like they probably lived together because they don't look scattered enough. Yeah, or they died together at least. At Lori's site, articulated bones were found. Most of those bones show damage, including being crushed. And the damage appears to be due to trampling. So it's possible that a gregarious herd or group died together. Maybe they died congregating at a water hole during a drought and then were scavenged and the bones were disarticulated and then the remains transported and buried on a floodplain. Or they died from a mass drowning of a herd migrating while forging a river. And that's based on distribution of the bones being similar to wildebeest drowning mortalities with carcasses concentrated on a floodplain. Hmm. Either way, there was some post-mortem decay, you know, after they died, and disarticulation, and then they were buried. Gastonia lived in a dry area with a short wet season in a partly wooded area. Other dinosaurs that lived around the same time and place include Hippodraco, Iguana Colossus, the sauropod Cedarosaurus, and theropods like Martha Raptor and Utah Raptor. For those of you who listen to our Dinosaur of the Day segment and you like it, please consider becoming a patron. We take new Dinosaur of the Day requests from our patrons and offer a bunch of other perks as well. So check out our page at patreon.com slash I know dino or click the link on the left. <laughs> 